Well, hello everyone. This is Nurse Keith here from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I am joined by my esteemed colleague, Beth Hawks from Bakersfield, California, and we're here under the auspices of allnurses.com. So Beth, how are you? I'm really great today. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm really good, and it's great to be back here with you today and with all our visitors and all our listeners and everyone who's tuning in and those of you who are tuning in after the fact because this of course is archived on the Nurses Rock All Nurses Facebook page and is also on the All Nurses YouTube channel pretty quickly after it goes up. We've had great response to our video from last night talking about the legislative agenda for Nurses Take DC and we really want to give a shout out to the Nurses Take DC folks the show me your stethoscope people who are the nonprofit behind this entire movement. So show me your stethoscope. We know you're out there. We thank you and thank you for making this happen so that we can all meet in DC and do this really important work. So Beth, why don't we jump in and let's start discussing what this legislation means. What does this mean and what's gonna happen? So there's a bill in the um, House of Representatives, and there's uh, a sister bill in the Senate. Okay. And both of the bills call for mandated nurse-patient ratios, similar to what we have here in California. And that means that acuity is taken into consideration, as it should be, but there's a minimum ratio. And hospitals cannot go below that. So as an example, to help you understand, on telemetry units, in California, the uh, mandated ratio is one nurse to four telemetry patients. Okay. It can never be five patients. It could be three, and sometimes it is. It cannot be five, it cannot be six, so one to four. We want that for every nurse and every patient in the United States. And do you want to share a little bit about these particular pieces of legislation? And I think you have a visual aid for us. Yes, I wanted you to have a visual for some of the things I'm going to talk about. Okay, so first of all, on the top, if you type in nurse patient ratios legislation.com, it's going to take you to a very informative site, including a petition. So today we're going to talk about at least four ways you can influence your legislatures. And this is one way, one thing we're calling everybody to do. Of the four ways we're going to talk about tonight, I really urge you to pick one. So here's one. On this upper site right here, um, a lot of information about the bill. I, I urge you to read a synopsis of each of the bills and then sign a petition. You know, there are 3 million nurses in the United States. So if only 5% if only of them signed a petition, they would stand up and take notice because that would be, let's see, 5% of Three. It'd be a lot of nurses, right? There you go. It would be a, a lot of nurses. Now, right down below it, I have the Show Me Your Stethoscope logo. These are the folks grassroots that is responsible for the event that Keith and I are going to attend April 25th and 26th, and where we want you to attend as well. Now, you see the number of the bill, HR. 2392 is the bill that is in the House now that your representative is going to vote on one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And your representative is going to be influenced by some pretty strong lobbyists that are opposing the bill, including some special interest groups such as the American Hospital Association or the AHA. In very well-spoken people. If your representative does not hear from you, they're probably going to buy whatever the HS says, hook, line, and sinker. And it's up to us to tell them that these are important bills for uh, patient safety. The one in the Senate is, a, is Senate Bill 1063. It's important for you to know these numbers, even if you just Google them and you're gonna learn so much in just a few minutes. Uh, because when you contact your legislature, which is what we want to help you do tonight, you are going to reference these bills. Mm -hmm. HR 2392, Senate 1063. Right. 
And Beth, just uh -huh. keep that held up for a second. Um, sure. We just want to make sure people know that when it says HR, it's the House of Representatives, of course. So any bill going through the House of Representatives is preceded by those letters, and Senate bills are preceded by the S. So if you're going to reference a bill, make sure you're going to be using the HR bill when you're ca contacting your congressperson, your member of the House of Representatives, and make sure you're referencing the Senate bill when you're contacting one of your two or both of your senators from your state, because we all know that each state has two senators. So you always double check that you're referencing the correct bill for the correct type of legislator and that you're using the HR or the S appropriately. Right, Beth? Perfect. Exactly, yeah. yes. And then I see you also have another URL at the bottom. What's that one? Okay, now we have um, nursestakedc.com. Mm -hmm. So this is where you're going to just um, go to this site. It's going to have all the information about the event that we talked about on April 25th and April 26th in Washington, D.C., where I hope to meet you. Uh, it's going to have hotel reservation information, um, activities the day of and the day before. It's going to help you to make an appointment with your representative in Congress and maybe even the Senate um, the afternoon of the rally. And that's going to be so good, those face-to-face -face meetings. Right. The, the final URL on here is um, an extension, nursestakedc.com, legislative dot information. So again, that's where you can just get a lot more information. Okay. And Beth, I have a question that other people may have is that the bills say that they're from 2017 and that doesn't matter, right? It does not matter. That's a good question. So they were, that's when they were introduced. And okay. so on these sites, which I hope you go to you, you can quickly learn how a bill becomes a law. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like a Sesame Street song that we all know? It, it actually is a Sesame Street song. It's a good one. We should have that, Keith. We Did should. you know? I'm a bill, I'm a bill, right. Yeah, it goes on and on. Yeah. And you could have come that, I believe, because I believe you're musically talented. Is that correct? Very slightly, extremely yeah. slightly. Yeah. So a bill is introduced, and then um, it is pretty It is then often assigned to a subcommittee. So both of these are in subcommittees where they're being evaluated. But now is the time. And it, it, uh, bills do not get approved um, overnight. They have to go through a process, and rightly so. But now is the time to talk to our representatives. Because as the phone calls come in, as the letters pile up on their desk, mm -hmm. they will take notice. Right. You know, nurses are, we are such good advocates for patients. I know you have those skills. Every one of us does. We advocate for patients and we don't even think twice about it. Nope. That's what this is about. Advocating for ourselves, which actually is advocating for our patients. That's very true. And that's our, those patients include ourselves, of course, because sometimes we're in the hospital. It includes our family, our friends, our colleagues, our coworkers, our acquaintances, the person who makes our coffee at the local coffee shop, all of those people are potential patients at any given time, right? So we're advocating for every person we see on the street whenever we advocate for anything involving improving healthcare delivery in the United States. And one thing, Beth, I wanna point out is that if you can't go to DC, and many, many, many of you can't do it, you have children, you have responsibilities, you have jobs, we totally get that. So there's plenty you can do from the comfort of your own home. Yes. You can go to these websites, find out what you can do. You can write letters, you can sign petitions. You can also call the offices of your senators and your congresspeople, mm -hmm. um, congressmen and congresswomen, and you know, most, actually, I think all Congress, members of Congress and senators have offices in their home state, the state they represent. Mm -hmm. So even if you are going to D.C. and you're a little concerned about how to fit in the time and that the Capitol is going to be mobbed with nurses and you're not going to be able to meet with your representative or your senator, meet mm -hmm. with them at home. 
Like here in Santa Fe, this is the capital of our tiny, tiny state of New Mexico. I can make an appointment to meet with Tom Udall or any of my mm -hmm. Congress people or Martin Heinrich, our other senator. I can meet with, with them here before I go to DC or mm -hmm. after I go to DC. I can also call and leave messages. They definitely tally those calls. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that when you sign a petition, an online petition, it has a little bit of an impact, you know, but they know a lot of people sign those without really thinking. Oh. And if you forward an email that's basically a form letter that everyone else does to uh, a congressperson I know here in Santa Fe, he calls that kind of astroturf, like not quite grassroots, it's astroturf. It's kind of like artificial mm -hmm. activism. He said that if you call and say you're a constituent, give your name and where you live and your zip code, they catalog every single call. And they assume that for every one person that calls, that person is probably representing a certain number of hundreds or thousands of people who didn't bother to call. Mm -hmm. The same goes with if you actually send a letter by mail. Remember when we like put letters in envelopes with stamps and put them in the mailbox? If you do that, they really notice when they get snail mail. They, they do. really do notice mail from the Postal Service. So those can have really, really powerful impact. And we do have something from Kimberly. She says, well, I no longer am directly affected by this, but will always indicate for my sister and brother nurses. That's great, Kimberly. And Sandy Harmon says, are you union members? Is that what backs your movement? Um, and Kimberly also asked, would this affect CNAs as well? So, Sandy, I'll say that I'm not a union member. I never have been. Um, in all of my years as a nurse for 21 years, I've never been a union member. And I don't believe the Nurses Take DC organization is really union related, to the best of my knowledge. I know they're a nonprofit. Beth, can you speak to the union issue? Um, yes, thanks, Sandy. I am not a union member. And um, it's not required whatsoever to back this movement. The uh, Show Me Your Stethoscope movement is affiliated with, for example, the California Nurses Union um, that did pass, the, got the law passed in California. But um, what we're talking about here is a grassroots movement and the power of cons being a constituent, I think. And I, and I really appreciate what um, Keith said. The, the most powerful way to influence your legislature, it would be a face-to-face. They don't forget those, and they feel that anybody that takes the time to drive or to their local office or go to Washington, D.C., they hold that in high value. That's not practical for everybody. When you write a letter, like he said, avoid form letters. The next most impactful way would be a, hand, uh, a letter, the old-fashioned snail mail, uh -huh. because that takes a little bit more effort. It will be cataloged and noticed. Uh, when you address your letter, include your address in the letter itself. Uh, and the reason why is you're going to ask for a response. So when you, the, the salutation should be uh, the honorable, the respectful way is to put the honorable Kevin McCarthy, for example. Mm -hmm. In the first sentence, you want to reference the bill. The honorable Kevin McCarthy, I'm respectfully contacting you. You're always going to be professional. Assume agreement is a good way to look at it, and be um, nothing but professional, never argumentative or heaven sakes threatening. It's not. It's not about that. We um, relationships are what influence people. Um, in the first sentence, you want to reference the bill that you're talking about. I am writing to you about HR Bill twenty three ninety two. You want your letter to be one page long, not longer. It may not get read. Uh, and if you need to practice the skill of being succinct, I'm really good at that. But you have somebody in your life who is too, and that's an important skill. Um, you want to tell him two things. How you would like your representative, he or her, to vote. Mm -hmm. And briefly why. I would think about including a short story because stories are memorable. That's and true. You have them. Every nurse listening to this, you have so many stories, and they are impactful, and we understand them. But people outside of healthcare, not directly, are really impacted by them. If you did not, whatever your story is, if you did not get a break 
for 10 hours. People don't know this. It's okay. really, really true. If there was patient harm because there was not adequate staffing, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Include a short story. In your closing, I would recommend saying, um, thank you for, you know, your consideration. I would like you to reply back and ex please explain how you're going to vote and the reason why. Now that is more likely to get you a non-form letter response if you ask for their explanation because they have form letters too where they could just say, gee, thanks, that was great and I'm gonna consider it. But if you ask for an explanation, it's a little harder to do that. The third most impactful way would be to email. Um, I forgot the first step. You need to find out who is your representative and they're senators, and I am not judging you guys at all if you don't know, because I am not a political person. I am just doing this because I think it's the right thing to do. You may not even know. You may have avoided the whole political scene. All you have to do is go on Google and say, who is my congressman? Bingo, and within a couple of hits, you're gonna get the link to your representative's local office, Washington office, phone numbers of both, and their email. So you can do this like tonight, it'll take you three minutes, I think. Two minutes. And you can, two minutes. And a minute and a half. If you're slow like me, maybe three. Okay. You can get this done and you can write your email. Your email should be formatted very much like the letter. Like Keith said, the petition is the weakest form that's most likely to be um, uh, put aside. Mm -hmm. And so, but we've given you at least four different ways. And I myself am, going to do all four meet in person send a letter sense. call email and sign the petition oh my gosh i guess that's five that's five beth you're going to be very busy this weekend and um if any of you are just joining us this is keith carlson nurse keith and beth hawks we are here from santa fe new mexico and um bakersfield so california yeah. Effectively. And we are here under the auspices of allnurses.com and we are doing a series of Facebook live events beginning last night and going forward all about Nurses Take DC and the pending legislation. So thanks for being here. We have a bunch of comments coming in. Doris Carroll said, I made five calls today. All right, Doris. She said, Oregon and Washington talking to office staff who sponsored ANA's bills rather than S1063 and A. Wow. Doris, that's interesting. We'd be interested to know what you learned. Dina Soa McCollum says, tell your story, tell your why. The unions, unions aren't the driver, but the support of the unions is nice. And I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, what else do we have here? Oh, um, Doris Carroll shared a link. It is in the comments under this video. It is govtrack.us slash congress slash members so that'll be in the comments thank you very much doris and good old google will always get you there too you can just say who are my congress people and senator and you will get that information mm -hmm. one thing i wanted to point out about any email that you send or letter that you write put your credentials after your name yes. because we all know nurses are the most i know we've said this so many times haven't we the most trusted professionals in the United States 17 years in a row, according to the Gallup poll, right? So if your representative or your senator sees RN, BSN, MSN, PhD, whatever it is, flaunt it. You earned it, flaunt it. And make sure at the end of your at the end of your email as well, you have all those credentials because that will speak to them that they're hearing from a nurse. Um, Kathy Stokes says, you guys rock. Thank you, Kathy, thanks very much. I'll, and yeah. go ahead, Beth, you have another um, I wanna question? say thank you to Kathy and Doris, everybody who wrote in and Dina and Kimberly, thank you for your question, Sandy, because um, I know Dina, Doris and Kathy particularly have been working so hard, so very long for this. and. Really appreciate you tuning in. Cannot wait to meet you guys face to face in Washington. Yeah. So Dina, so McCollum says, so trust us. This is important. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Dina. And what I want to say too to the folks who have never been politically active before, and again, like like Mary, like, like Beth said, no judgment. No judgment. We all have different things and priorities in our lives. 
we have families and jobs and bills and I mean there's so many things we have going on however if you feel moved to get involved in this and if you're watching and you're feeling that itch it doesn't necessarily take a lot of energy and time and resources mm -hmm. going to dc does we we recognize that going to dc costs money it costs you time it could be inconvenient to your family your spouses your children we get that so there's plenty that you can do like i said earlier from the comfort of your own home and there's plenty you can do visiting the offices of your representatives and senators right in your home state and if you live very far from where they have offices use the telephone use the mail and use email and you will still have an impact so we all have different capacities in our lives and in our careers mm -hmm. we all have things that we feel capable of doing at any given time so honor yourself honor your limits and your boundaries and your needs and the needs of your family and do what makes sense for you and we just encourage you to do something because this is so important and mm -hmm. we know a lot of you have we know a lot of you have stuff going on at work that you're not happy about and if some of it is related to these staffing issues and these nurse patient ratio issues mm -hmm. now is the time to tell your stories don't you think beth i i so agree you put it so well and if you those of you who are listening, if, if anything you heard her sparked something within yourself, like, yeah, you know, I really should do that. Please act on it because that feeling will fade. And yes. unfortunately in the busyness of your life and we need you um, again, there's 3 million of us and each one of us is a constituent, which really is more important to your legislature than I believe special interest parties because we vote for them. They will listen. And so just make that phone call, make an email, send a letter, whatever we can do to help you, we'd love to do. That's very true. And um, Kathy Stokes just said, they need to realize that actual bedside nurses are speaking up. That's right. They need to hear from the people with boots on the ground. Well, y'all don't wear boots at work, but you know what I mean? Yes, Crocs, on the, Crocs on the ground. Right. right. And um, Kim St. John says, is there a form letter or do we have to write our own words? Kathy Stokes says, Kim, we can help you and provide quality information to include evidence-based information and talking points. So Kathy, if you could put in the comments below this video where they can contact you for that information. And Kim St. John, I'll just say that those form letters definitely lose a little bit of their power because if they're seeing the same stuff over and over again, they realize you're just copy and pasting. So something you can do if you get those talking points or you get a hold of um, a form letter is just switch it around a little bit and add a little personal information and make it make it more your own and that does take a few minutes we recognize that it's not just cut and paste and send you have to put a little more energy into it um kathy stokes also says be sure to make an appointment in dc so mm -hmm. if you are going to dc make an appointment if you're not make an appointment if you can conveniently or relatively conveniently get to your Congress people's offices in your home state mm -hmm. or your senator's office in the home state. And again, telephone and mail mm -hmm. is perfectly fine if you can't do that. Doris Carroll said when she called those people who had voted for the ANA rather than these bills, she said they listened, but then you ask for the health policy staffer or scheduler name if they're available and follow up with an email. I said I was concerned why they sponsor bills that are not necessarily from the voice of nursing. They need the bedside nurse perspective based in research. Okay, so Kathy just shared that you can email nursestakedc at gmail.com. That is nursestakedc at gmail.com. Ask them for information and talking points, and you can formulate your own letters. Right, Beth? That's great. Yeah, we yeah. can do this. Mm -hmm. We can do this. And we want to let you all know that uh, I'm here with Beth. I'm Nurse Keith, and I'm here with Beth Hawks, and I'm going away on vacation on Monday. I can't wait. And when I get back, we're going to do another one of these, probably the week of March 26th, and then we'll be doing at least one of these Facebook Lives every week until we go to D.C. And Beth, I hope we're going to do some Facebook Live from D.C., I imagine, right? Absolutely. I think we need to plan on that. It's going to be so exciting with so many people that have so much to say, yes, to share. Right. So make sure you monitor 
allnurses.com on Facebook or the All Nurses website. There'll be chats there where you can see all this information. Also the Nurses Rock Facebook page. And Beth, I'm sure it'll be on your Facebook page at, is it um, Code Nurse? My blog is nursecode.com. Sorry, nursecode.com. My Facebook right. page is also called Nurse Code. So, yeah. Right. And you can follow me. I'm at nursekeith.com. And my Facebook page is Nurse Keith Coaching. So I'll be posting there as well. Yeah. Um, Kim St. John says, yes, we could impact a lot. Just think what we did regarding that comedian, Joy Bahar, who commented about the doctor's stethoscope. Remember exactly. that? Story? Thank you, Started Joy Bahar. You have no idea what happened because of your um, comment. That's right. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Um, so Joy Bihar, I mean, she really made it happen. And um, our YouTube is youtube.com forward slash all nurses. That's youtube.com forward slash all nurses. So allnurses.com is the clearinghouse for everything related to everything that Beth and I are doing here. So you can always go to allnurses.com to find what you need and their Facebook page and their other social media. You can find me, Nurse Keith, all over social media and at nursekeith.com. And Beth, give your contact information one more time. Uh, my blog, nursecode.com. <coughs> my Facebook page, uh, also nurse, Facebook Nurse Code. Um, my, let's see, Twitter handle, I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> well, just you go to nursecode.com. I'm, I'm Ask Nurse Beth at allnurses.com, where my career... I do uh, career column advice, so yeah. That's right. I'm also kind of all over. Yeah, we're both all over. You can always find us. And this is really about you. This is about the nursing community speaking up. This is about us speaking truth to power. It's our ability and our moment to step forward and to advocate for something we believe in. And if you're not sure if you believe in mandated legislatively mandated nurse patient ratios, then do some reading. Beth has an awesome article that's been referenced many times on the allnurses.com Facebook page. And that is really one of the greatest ways to learn all about this because Beth is such an amazing writer who really backs it up with the evidence and the research. So there's plenty of information out there, read all about it, get informed because an informed citizenry is who can really impact change world and in this country. So we really encourage you and Beth and I thank you for being here with us. Again, follow all nurses. We'll be back at the end of March every week until DC to keep educating you and inspiring you and cajoling you to get involved in this movement. So <laughs> any last moments, any last, last uh, comments, Beth? Nope. Just want to send out a lot of nurse love to everybody and we will see you in a couple weeks like Keith said. <laughs>